When a threat incident occurs, every second matters. That is why the response of your cybersecurity team is vital. Globe Business knows this very well. That is why the company partnered with the best global cybersecurity providers to offer cybersecurity solutions and services that help enterprises identify, respond, and recover from cyber threats. Let's learn more about the threat incident response in the Philippine landscape from Mr. Joseph Milo Pacamara, Head of Security Operations Center at Yundu Incorporated, a subsidiary of Globe Telecom. A better future is built by the brave. Envisioned by brilliant minds. Born from the passions of thousands strong. One that isn't without risk, but protected from it. Safe from all the worries and secure for what's to come. Because a better future with the greatest empires, the strongest communities, and the happiest families will always be worth having. That's why the bold and the fearless understand that recreating something better takes courage and strength. So together, let's start shaping a better future today. All right, good, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, this is Joseph Felix Pramar from um, Globe. Um, I'm representing the Globe SOC department. So this is the Managed Security Operations Center. And uh, yeah, we can go into the discussion for today for what are we importing for ISO so that uh, which could, we cover much about the which could, incident response versus um, the threat landscape in the Philippines. For starters, so as mentioned a while ago, our discussion for today is more about the uh, threat incident response in the Philippine threat landscape. Okay, so um, much much to do uh, without much to do with, with things with incident response. Let's try to start with demographics and realization. Okay, so most of the incident responders um, training and academic um, academy guys and whatnot. Who loves to what you call that, uh, tweak about with the incident response? Forgot that um, the discipline came from an actual experience long before there was a cybersecurity. Okay, so think of this as a presentation, as a representation of what you're dealing with. This is what you call that. This is D Day, um, first day of D Day. Uh, so. If you can see beyond, beyond the horizon is the cyber criminals, malware authors, hacktivists, insider threat, and nation state attackers. This is the battle space. Okay. So whatever training you have, whatever infrastructure you have, there is one common denominator. No plans uh, survive first contact with the enemy. It is a uh, what you call it, a time honored uh, tested. Uh, what you call that narrative inside the battlefield? Okay. So, for starters, let's do the statistics in the Philippines. Okay. So, as you can see, this is a threat intel collected on the local landscape in the Philippines. So, this started around uh, what January. Okay. This was collected by our team. So, this uh, pretty much represent. Uh, those with what you call that with asset that was compromised within the Philippines, uh, total 260 occurrences of incidents. Okay, so this is um, this run through from January 2021 up until to September 21st, 2021. Okay, so so the uh, so as vulnerable asset compromise. All right, so we broke it down to the different sector. So there's an education, government, security. So security is more of a defense department and whatnot in the Philippines. Then there's a the private sector. Now, the numbers, uh, as you can see, it's quite staggering, okay? So education departments actually in the peak of most of them, okay? So government followed in. 
So defense, so this is the, what you call that, the armed forces and uh, the police. So they have one um, compromise and the private sector has 53, okay? So as you will see along the way, uh, you would see the asset that was actually compromised as more siding on the Linux flavors. So more than open source, okay? Then followed by 51 cloud assets, okay? And then for the Windows side, so that 2008 are no longer supported, 2012, there's three of them, and 2016. So these are misconfigured infrastructure, okay? And some has actually vulnerability by itself, which has not been managed. So this is more of the statistics that you're dealing with within the Philippines, okay? So as we move forward, so the other threats that you're looking at, so I'm referencing here something from the community. So this is weaponized Google script that cannot be, be detected up until to this day because, well, it's whitelisted by most AV. So it will render most detection useless, okay? This is delivered, uh, this is being used right now for phishing and uh, malware, de uh, malware deployment. And by the way, before I forget, these are all in 2021. So there's our Linux and the ASXi ransomware right now propagating. So there, what's good at? If you can see the killer payload, the function is to kill, well, actually forced to kill the processes of the uh, virtual environment, okay? It's visible in the screen right now. So there are multiple ransomware variants as well. Uh, as you can see now, there's around what? That's a good number, okay? Then we have an APTs that peppered Philippines early on around Q1 or Q2 of this year. All right. Now there's as well a targeted. Uh, this one is targeting government sector. And this one spreading out to the private sector as well. Telco, academia, R&D, and government sector as well. All right. So literally... Incident response is not just like, uh, would you call that? You're firefighting, okay? I've seen companies before burn millions of dollars in one week. Didn't do much with the attack that they're actually getting, okay? It forced the company to shut down for what? More or less like 15 days up until they realized that defense is, only, is not enough, all right? So... As we're talking about incident response versus landscape, understanding the opposition, their capability, and the regional and national threat landscape that the IR and team will tackle. That's the only way you can actually provide a sound incident response. Okay. Uh, more later on, we will show you much of the differentiation of how we do it. So, with the ongoing pandemic, you would see the business survival requirements. So, as we all know work from home is now becoming a trend okay so in the screen you would see uh, the different sectors that are actually surviving right now the pandemic so tmt more of the technology media and telecom so if you can see the differentiator prior to COVID, there is much less remote work okay the, the remote work would be more than likely their uh what you call it their newscasters on field and whatnot all right or field engineer for telecom but that changes everything after uh, COVID-19. So this is a data coming from US uh, Bureau of Labor and Statistics, okay? So whichever you fall in the screen, you might wanna reconsider why you need to, what you call that, adapt, because this is the only way, all right? What comes with it is the inherent risk. So your opposition, by the way, while you're here in this, uh, trying to wrangle the number on how you would survive uh, would you actually provision your your employees and whatnot? Your opposition, uh, actually, this one is a simplified version. This is organized crime group, right? And they're now creeping slowly in the Philippines. We have seen some uh, some local groups, uh, you want to call that uh, hacktivists and whatnot, if they ever are hacktivists or just like, uh, what you call that? Just like plain what you call that, a villager, cyber villager. So they're actually coordinated now with cyber organized group across the world. So now this is, this is how organized they are. So they have team leader, coder, network administrator, intrusion specialist, data miners, and money specialists. So they're an organized bunch. I would tell you, frankly, I've encountered some of them. 
they're much more organized than a regular company. Okay. So they are notoriously OC when it comes to things. All right. So now this is a simplified version. Let's expand to the bigger version. So if you can see whatever you have in your company, if you are one of those Fortune 500 companies or with a sound budget, they have those. Okay. They would go as far head to toe with what um, toe to toe with you when it comes to cybersecurity. The only difference is they have both defense and offense. Okay. Now, it is guys, we will tackle it later on. Has one added factor. It can be a local group or it can be your employees. So you may want to reconsider checking or doing check and balances within your infrastructure, within your infrastructure and workforce. So Going much about a number. So this is coming from the FBI. Uh, this is from IC3. So large monetary damage caused by reported cybercrime for IC3. This is 2020. This is reported 2021. So now, as everybody know, cyber criminals' motivation is all about money. Money is everything for these guys. Now they say it's information. Yeah, information can be uh, can be used as a layer, which will as a leverage for money. So it goes the same way. Either have your money or your power. You have control. All right. So threat landscape. So we go in Asia. So less with the global aspect. Let's go with Asia. So this is a report from Interpol as of 2020. As you can see, I pointed out mal uh, banking malware. So now diversifying to it, what comes with banking malware is not by itself, it's not just like banking malware by itself. It comes with friends and relatives. Malware usually comes in families, okay? Now, if you can see here, this is a report of 2020 indicating that the highest one is in Indonesia and the second one is in the Philippines, okay? You may want to consider how you structure your, what you call that remote workforce, okay? If this one is ballooning, and I bet in 2021, when that report comes out, this one would change significantly. All right. Uh, by the way, I usually use law enforcement data because law enforcement data, as compared to what you call that technology vendors, they are not uh, what you call that, They're not specific to what they can see, or these are actual cases reported by people. So there are legal cases running around on them, and there are like, prosecution and whatnot. So i rather go for law enforcement data, okay? So the target for bi uh, business survival asset is your employee. If you can see here, I, can, uh, I will skip much of the numbers here, but if you can see here, the significant, uh, what do you call that? Uh, shall we say the target, okay? These are the soft target for any company. You may have, what, a million dollar worth of, uh, what you call that, of, NAVG or you invested too much on firewalls or whatnot. You have SSO, you might have what? DLPs and whatnot, okay? But if your employee is not aware or so they, they don't like, ha, lack the vigilance or whatnot, so they are actually, the, they are the target. They're the biggest target of them all, okay? So, so if you can see here, 97%, Employees say that they would report a breach, which is good news for five to, uh, for for the fifty five percent IT leaders who rely on employee to alert them. So now ninety seven percent. Now what happened to the other percent? Okay, so there's still room in there, and I would uh what you call that? I would actually ask you to what you call that? Empower your employee, okay? Because they are the biggest target, okay? The weakest point of the infrastructure is actually the employee. Now, no matter how much security you have, if they get breached, everything follows, all right? So these are the emerging and active challenges and threats within the region. So we're gonna step on it one at a time before we go into how incident response should be tackled. So threat breakdown. So uh, there's a 2021 report here that shows what most, most of you, if not all, may have not encountered this one yet. So, but Microsoft already flagged in, what you call it, a report indicating firmware attacks, okay? Some of you may have heard of software and hardware attacks, but not much with the firmware, okay? So they're diversifying right now, right? Now, 
uh, other than vulnerable assets, you have software and hardware. So going back to what we have before, so these are most of the vulnerabilities, okay? A good number of companies actually got breached, okay? So education sector, government in the Philippines, defense sector, and private companies. So the defense sector actually changed already because in 2019 and 2020, they were the one being peppered. Now, in 2021, they actually act, step up to the challenge and they only have one breach, okay? So moving forward, there are as well the unauthorized asset, unauthorized application, misconfigured devices, backup and synchronization issues. So these are all adjacent to configuration issues and whatnot, all right? And some of user behavior as well. So if you can see here, User behavior, we, can try, we target as insider threat. Now, here's something uh, worrying. Hacker caught offering money to corporate employed, um, when or corporate worker to deploy ransomware. Now, when this one was actually expounded, they're offering $1 million uh, worth of Bitcoin to employees to install ransomware, okay? So now, who are the biggest threat to you guys? Okay, so, this is usually employed if the company that, that being targeted by the opposition or the hackers are quite strong. So they're actually levering, I mean, levying on the part of employees disgruntled, uh, which call it with their position, their salary. So you may want to consider asking yourself, how much would it take for an employee to give up whatever security they have for a $1 million or say, just $1 million is an option because it's a big company. So let's try $250,000. What can you offer your employees to stop accepting a $250,000 offer? Just think about it, all right? So discussing more in user behavior, if you can see here the list, okay? So these are all most of the most serious attack vectors, okay? So if you can see on the right side, so sorry, uh, right side, it, it pointed out everything, the statistic on the middle part, okay? So there's overall BSB, SMB, and enterprise. Now, if you can see here, user behavior is actually one that's being, shall we say, being exploited a lot, okay? So insider threat, malicious action caused by internal staff. Then you have phishing and social engineering. Uh, okay, if you sum it up, okay, so let's look at enterprise. Insider threat is a 6%. Phishing and social engineering is a 7%. Accidental loss of hardware, which can also be an insider threat, okay? So that's what? Uh, accidental loss would be at 7%. Then careless, uninformed employees, you have a 12%. Now, sum that up that actually gives you an enough not and which would end up uh which would idea of why they're being targeted okay so you may want to consider ramping up those awareness education program uh, reinforcement salary upgrade or policies to cover your employees okay because they're now they know your weaknesses okay so to those who say like, yeah, we can get about with employees, I would ask you that question. How many of you have the guts to tell your director, BP of different flavors, CISO, CTO, CFO, C COO, and CEO, to stop letting their kids, girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, husband, and lovers from using corporate controlled devices? Think about it, okay? Because this doesn't only apply to the rank and file. This applies to everyone. Okay. Moving on. So, is there insider threat? You have a careless user. You have payment card breach, industrial espionage. So, industrial espionage, by the way, covers corporate espionage and cyber espionage, data theft, and IB sabotage. IB sabotage is the last part of the stage. Usually, if they're done with everything here to the left side, I see IT sabotage is their means to wipe all traces of their footprint in your infrastructure. So malware. So as you mentioned, well, you have 
a remote workforce, all right? So you, you can, most of the practice right now is running on phones or say running, running, um, e reading emails on phones, no longer in computers, whatnot. So are those phone corporate, uh, corporate phones? Do you have proper security with them? Or are they bring your own device or use your own device approach, okay? The same cost. So think about it, okay? So some of the users use different storages, cloud and portable acquired from authorized downloads. So they share among their group. They're, remember, these guys are no longer in your office, okay? You may want to reevaluate your strategy and policies. All right, so malwares. Backlink with malware. So if you can see here, this is uh, a comparison from January, I'm oh, sorry, February 2020 to January 2021. Uh, they were looking at left side of the screen, top 10 malware. Now, if you can see the jump in uptick, they're expecting now that your workforce is going mobile because the deployment of threats is no longer drop, multiple, mal spam, and network. Okay. So these guys are moving away from conventional corporate threat vectors. They're now using malvertisement, uh, okay? Malvertisement is pretty much, you put an ad anywhere in the web, then once you click on it, you will have either download a threat or uh, deploy a script in the computer, whoever click on it, okay? So these are advertising, okay? These are the regular ads, but they cannot differentiate it because they they already been paid for in social media sites. Okay, we are seeing this now on what you call it in Facebook primarily, and some other websites, even in news companies. I've seen their their pages because they don't filter which uh, advertiser is actually coming in. All right, so top ten malware we have the TLP white. So guys, to the top, to the ten malwares. Okay, so the one in the blue with the seven four percent is what we call a dropper. Okay, so every every threat other than SH layer is that can be packaged actually by SH layer. So this guy is to the right and below SH layer. These are primarily remote access tools. So these are um, uh, they're designed to capture username and password, take screenshot of your system every like three minutes and send it via email or well a particular port. So the purpose of these threats, other than SH layer, is actually to penetrate and conduct breach on your system. Now, SH layer is the means for these guys not to be detected because it's more of like it creating a layer of defense before you actually see the malware. So they drop the malware. So SH layer changes every now and then. All right. So if you are using an inadequate or say an incompetent security solution, you will not detect these guys because SH layer is up front. Now, the moment SH layer lands on your system, it will open up Pandora's box. Only then these guys will actually execute. All right. So this is the malware industry. All right. So by ransomware, I bet you some of you would have loved to ask about ransomware. So if you see the uptake of the jump, that's actually what you're dealing with. Now, this is in relation to the strategy now of uh, what you call that, the malware authors to pay off employee internal guys to deploy threats in their system, all right? Uh, you heard some of those companies are actually compromised within the Philippines. So credential theft, if you can see here, so uh, guys, look at it again. So now expecting the ship, okay? Uh, if you can see, malware sites used to be the prominent one, okay? Then phishing sites just below the average, but they actually change it now, okay? Because malware sites are now being flagged. So when phishing type, these are actually, this can be using, a com uh, I'll show you later on after this slide. This can be using legitimate websites that was compromised and used as a phishing site. Phishing site can deliver malware as well, okay? Before it was malware. So they drag, um, pull out data, drop it on your system and whatnot. Now, phishing can do dual purpose. It can capture username and password as well as drop uh, malware as needed, all right? If you can see here, this is an example of a compromised website. And as you well know, this is a well-known bank in the Philippines. Now, look at the difference. Focus on the URL, okay? So now, 
this is, is a legitimate website being compromised and it even have an SSL. So nobody would actually dare question this, the, uh, the legit, uh, legitimacy for this one. But this is a common practice in the Philippines right now. Now, this was around 2021 or 2020 when we identified this one. So if you can see here, most company would just take down the site. However, we do it differently. We actually check and diagnose and crawl the sites. And we found a solution that they're using to conduct phishing and drop malware. All right. Now, you, if you see the tabs in there, you would see an SQL. Actually, and let me zoom that one out. This would hold the content for all the compromised assets. So you, from here alone, we can stop this and provide mitigation on spot. Notify all victims that, hey, you were compromised. Uh, deny the attacker the capability to further exploit them. Identify the attacker and then brought them to the law for prosecution and whatnot, for jail time, okay? Because everything here was identified. Now, that is how we deal with threats, okay? Now, credential tab, you know, that goes with phishing as well. So now, here is the 21, uh, this is a September 21st. Uh, this is a few days ago. Now, remember ransomware being, what you call that? Being supported by author by itself with some bounty. Now, try that with phishing. So now they're going now, as per Microsoft, they're actually now pushing for what you call that, um, phishing as a service, okay? So it's going, it's actually going nuts, guys, all right? So you may want to consider how you guys deal with infrastructure, okay? So if you can see here, uh, what actually worries me is the bulletproof link. So this one now are using bulletproof infrastructure. These are, these are sites that cannot be prosecuted or be taken down, okay? So breakdown for industrial espionage as we mentioned before. So it start with the device loss. It can be a legitimate device loss or somebody stole it or your employee was paid to, to misplace the devices and just declare this loss, okay? But with a few, few minutes delay or a 30 minutes delay, okay? So that is why it's very important to have every asset monitor, okay? Not just a computer, including a phone. So network eavesdropping, device eavesdropping. So these are, well, these are most of the technology they have. So if you can uh, look at the figure to the right side. So now uh, check which industry you're in because this is actually real. So device eavesdropping, network eavesdropping, has been in the circulation since 2014 to 2010, okay? So they actually pick up packets and they actually can attack uh, systems that are air gap. So if you guys heard the idea, what you got to saying that if you don't want to be attacked, disconnect from the internet, I will tell you frankly, that doesn't work now, all right? Because as so long as you have a radio frequency, everybody can actually snip your data, okay? All you need is a radio frequency that can that can identify which one. Sorry, it, you all you need is a signal analyst who can identify which one is your device and which one is not yours. Okay, so yeah, uh, what you call that? This one it clearly indicates that uh, we need to move away from conventional strategies with incident response because you're no longer dealing now with well textbook people. You are guy. You guys are dealing now with the real, uh, with the real, uh, what you call that threats. Okay, this is a nation state attacker, and some of the nation state attacker are actually sharing the technology. Okay, so as you will heard from solar winds and some other concerns, so you have a supply chain vulnerability that goes with supply chain attacks. So as you can see here, that's a methodology that happened back then. So the version itself was compromised to deliver malware, all right? So supply chain attack is on the rise. So the goal is target data. So why target one individual if you can attack the entire infrastructure to where those group of companies are actually, uh, what do you call that? Uh, are actually storing their data or sharing their data. It's much easier, all right? So brand infringement. 
So brand infringement would go standalone or be a part of information warfare. So yeah, information warfare. Uh, it, that's why guys, uh, the perspective here is no longer um, more about ac academic. This is now more of applied security. So damage to your brand. So that's brand infringement, capturing and poaching of clients, dissuade clients and investors and whatnot. So counterfeit your brand services and product, fake news. Yeah, you guys know fake news. So misinformation and disinformation, it can hurt a lot, okay? That goes for individual or corporate. Now, incident response strategy. So with all the threats identified, we can go to incident response. I'll just simplify it today and well, maybe slip some part of our secret, but not all, okay? So the practice in the Philippines usually is centralized and distributed. So the difference of centralized is, yeah, all the branch site report, you have one engineer in there, not security, and they report all to the central office, okay? Central office is everywhere. So uh, ever heard of the contentions that says, uh, don't, uh, don't put all your eggs in one bucket? That's centralized, all right? So distributed as well. So distributed, each site location has their own IR team, independent from one another. Now, the problem here is coordination. How about if we do coordinated, okay? This is a common practice that we have. Coordinated is SOC and IR, in, IR team collaborates from central to what you call that, remote sites, okay? So the central becomes an escalation point. So knowledge management, policy design, and wider scope skill set. And the, the distributed guys or the site IR guys are the front line, all right? So they need to have a coordination, okay? Because the central office won't see what's actually in the field. They may hear it in paper. They may read or hear it on paper or by a phone, but they don't know how it feels on the ground, okay? Boots on the ground is what we need. So yeah, uh, just showcasing here, actually not showcasing, so just sharing to you, this is the dossier that we have. So some of the SOC I've encountered for run on 18855 uh, or whatnot. So ours run in, in 24 by 7, 365. We don't have vacation, okay? So we have remote incident response. We do on-site as well on demand. So we have a remote threat engagement manager. When we have an on-site threat engagement manager, we do continuous threat hunting, mitigation plan. So support network product and cloud. Now, this is the scope of work. The skill set and trade craft. So each product that we have, we have solution expertise, we have threat intelligence background, brand security, threat and behavioral analysis. So inside a threat program. So guys, if you guys are looking for uh, what do you call that? DFIR, so digital forensic engine response, it is inside inside a threat program, okay? Incident, uh, incident response and management. So audit government risks. So actually more the desk paper. Now, so the, what do you call that? The system we follow is pretty much clear cut. So you guys know NIST. We do so, uh, we do the same thing for NIST, just that we put it on a different level, okay? So most of you have the revision 51B for incident response cycle. So you have incident response plan, so yeah. This is the identification, tech enablement, short and long term roadmap. Okay. Mode management side. Incident capability, handling, monitoring, reporting, and assistance capability. So, defining skill set drills, capacity versus scope, opens and defense. All right. That's where the change happened. Okay. Now, we have an IR blending. So, as I mentioned before, we look at the background. We just don't do firefighting every day. All right. So we have adversarial predictive and behavioral analysis by strategical defense and office sourcing. So that is conduct provided by threat intelligence by our clients, so by our clients or by ourselves to create variable factors on how to contain an attack, how to delay an attack, how to lay attack, and how to interdict an attack, okay? So incident response policy, SLA and TOT. So SLA, yeah, so for TOT guys, so this is time on target. So role allocation and actual IR, uh, documentation, recovery, um, reporting activity. So incident response policy and procedure. So guys, this is not a Bible for us. Well, even though it's a Bible, it's more of a guiding step. That's why I bull face it, okay? It's a guiding step for engineer response team because as I mentioned at the beginning, not all plans work, okay? 
So you need to have layers contingency. Okay. And uh, people need to react. They are supposedly thinking out of the box most of the time. Okay. They don't follow much of a policy. Policies are good for standards. Other than that, it's more of a display and paperweight. Okay. So your people need to know how to adjust, adapt, overcome, and identify threats. If they fail on those procedures, then they cannot mitigate the issue. Okay. So moving on. Our methodology from the elastic defense. So this is done by conventional warfare. Uh, well, guys, um, hate to which would I hate on your parade, but cybersecurity is not a civilian discipline. It is a military discipline. So that's why we're bringing back the methodology before. So in elastic defense, it is the delaying tactic intended to slow down the advancing of enemy instead of stopping them. Now, many of the cybersecurity practitioner knows this as depth and defense. Now, what they do not know about depth and defense, most of them read it up until only that part. So, can slow down advancing opposition, causing to lose momentum. That's it. That's as far as they go. Actually. Depth in defense under elastic defense, okay? Can apply interdiction maneuver to harass. So, harass, attract, direct, confuse, divide the attacking element tempo to lessen the weight of attack on the initial targeted front or asset, okay? So, some people say depth in defense, yeah, it doesn't work for cybersecurity. Yeah, because your vocabulary for it differs from the original form of depth and defense okay so depth and defense is to delay the attacker then to harass them from all sides and all front that's why if you can see here this is the incident response cycle okay reference to nist again so you start with preparation detection analysis containment eradication and post incident reactivity so this is the basic okay now it goes like so. So preparation, yeah, you have everything, training, uh, enablement, and whatnot. So detection and analysis is there. So if the threat comes in, you have a detection analysis. Then uh, all document pertaining to those threat will be the will be what you call it, the source of containment, eradication, and recovery. Then it goes back again. Okay. So it's a cycle in the middle part. Now, from there, it goes to post incident activity. Now, it becomes now part of your knowledge management. So, tabletop exercises, uh, best practices, knowledge base, all right? So, it becomes preparation. Now, this is an endless loop. And I've seen this loop collapse, all right? You cannot all the time, okay? You will burn millions along the way. I've seen this happen. Now, what we did is we added target denial so an interdiction so target denial is constant all right so it's a dynamic warfare so you need to apply so you just knew uh you can you have you can do containment eradication recovery but along the way you're not denying the surface uh what you call the service uh weaknesses of the infrastructure so you just keep on reacting this is more of proactive approach okay you identify the threat analyze it would know where it's moving okay before it happens shut down that port shut down that uh what do you call it shut down that uh avenue of attack okay so it limits the attack surface now while you guys are engaging on firefighting okay as i pointed here on this previous slide you can now do interdiction interdiction is either by law or by a solution or whatnot, okay? If you want to know more how we do interdiction, have a sit down with most of our guys in Globe, all right? So this is what we do, all right? This is, uh, what do you call that? This is a working function and it's been working with us since what? For quite some time now in Globe. And I've got this not from a civilian practitioner. We got this from a nation state practitioner, okay? So match that incident response cycle with NIST Zero Trust. So that will actually uh, lock down most of your infrastructure. So in Zero Trust, some of you heard about it. So it's a buzzword right now. So to us, it's called Insider Threat Program. 
Okay, they just reworded it to zero trust. But ever since the beginning, we don't trust anybody with any infrastructure. Anybody with a device, anybody with any infrastructure, uh, with a key code and login, we evaluate them. Okay, so that's how we do it. Okay, so you have a constant monitor reporting that's provided by SAW. Then you have an incident response team with SAW that actually identifies all possible threats. So you need to understand your threat infrastructure and whatnot. So yeah, this is more about uh, SOC Security Operations Center. We have a layer theory. So we have an analyst, um, tier two, who are conducting investigation. We have a tier three or advanced investigations and threat hunters. And then forensic and counterintelligence, okay? Have you ever seen a counterintelligence in SOC? I bet you not, okay? So we are a different breed. So the SOC team are our organ certification. So pretty much we covered ISO 27. We are in an ISO 2700 facility. So we are pretty much notorious and obsessive compulsive with security. Okay. So the left side of the pane is more the management side, but the blue part of the screen is the operation side. Okay. As a part of operational security, we cannot show you those numbers. Okay. We can show you the management side. They're there. Okay. So certification we have, so as recently, we have DICT Cybersecurity Bureau recognized provider for BAPT and ISMS. We have the SANS, Comtia, ITIL. Then we have product vendors and whatnot. Actually, there's a lot of them. I cannot fill them up in the screen, all right? So this is the trade craft that we have, all right? I mentioned a while ago. So scope of work. Oh, I just repeated, all right? So um, any questions for violent reaction? Feel free, email uh, ISO, and thank you very much. All right.